Hi there, everyone. My name is Prerag Jithani. I am one of the internal medicine residents at Stanford. I'm actually a second year resident in internal medicine. And today I'm going to add to the intern essential series, which I think is a amogram of things that I wish I had known in my intern year. I've created several few videos about this in the past related to different topics. But today I want to focus on signing out. What is signing out? Why is it so important? And a standardized approach to say signing out, all right? So with that being said, what is signing out? And ultimately, how do you sign out? It might sound like something that, you know, everyone should know how to do, but interestingly, it's very tough to do well, and there are standardized ways to do it that have actually been shown to improve outcomes. So signing out essentially is that when you go home, you have to tell someone what happened during the day so that they can take care of the same patients that you were taking care of. The ultimate thesis behind this is that a hospital is a 24-7 endeavor and you'd be surprised, uh, but believe it or not, someone's got to be checked into your patients at all times because if someone's not there and something goes wrong, uh, that could be catastrophic. Um, you will often be on the receiving end of a sign out. So if you're working night shifts, sometimes people will sign out to you. And even if you're working day shifts, you're going to get sign out from the night squad about what happened during the day. So it's important that you not just know how to give good sign outs, but you're also going to be receiving sign outs. So, you know, it's going to be a two way street, essentially. There is a very impressive uh, verbal handoff tool called the iPass tool. There are papers written about this tool, and it's a tool that has been shown to improve signouts, ultimately improve patient outcomes, decrease the chances of errors. And the iPass tool, the I stands for illness severity. How sick is the patient that you're talking about? The P stands for patient summary. The A stands for action list. The S stands for situational awareness and contingency planning. And the last S stands for synthesis by the receiver. You should be going through each of these things uh, for every single one of your patients. And the fa phenomenal thing about my residency program that I have to really give credit to it is we actually have this integrated into Epic. So every single patient has to have this same format of signing out. and even though initially it was a little overwhelming, I think it has prevented a ton of errors and really helps me personally. So let me now tell you how to do this because if your institution doesn't have this standardized format, I think it would be a really good idea to implement it at least for yourself and then teach others around you how to do it. Because even if you're a med student and you know how to do this, I think it just like puts you miles ahead of others. Um, so. Here, I told you, we actually have this integrated into our EPIC. So you'll see that we actually have the illness severity. We have the you know patient summary. We have things that you need to do. We have the situational awareness with the if-then. So I'm going to go over each of these topics so you'll know how to approach them. So as I said, the I stands for illness severity. The first thing you want to tell me is, is this patient sick? Are they very sick? Or are they someone that I'm like really, really worried about? So notice how this is a, a stable patient stable, so they're sick, but they're nothing anything worried, nothing acutely wrong with them. A watcher is someone that I should probably keep an eye on because they could get much worse. And someone who is unstable is someone who is like already hypotensive. Um, they've been in and out of the ICU and this morning they started having a fever, like someone who's on the brink of potentially deteriorating. Usually I don't like to sign out unstable patients. It's very important to stabilize them and get them to either be a watcher or stable, but sometimes you have to sign out unstable patients. And then the P is the patient summary. What is the patient here with? And I usually like to include like the big things that happened during the day. So I'll say, hey, this is like a 54-year-old cirrhotic. He actually came in with what we thought to be a GI bleed, but actually uh, it ended up not being a GI bleed based on the endoscopy results, so we're not as concerned. The patient just had the endoscopy today. He's recovering well. He resumed his diet, and I think we're just diuresing him today. That's the biggest thing that happened. So you'll see that that's kind of the next thing. The summary is who is the patient and what happened today. Um, and so those are the first two parts of signing out. So this is a totally made up patient, but you'll see that I said, this patient is a watcher. Uh, I'm, this is a totally new patient, but here's the example. I said, the patient's a watcher. We just had a large volume paracentesis for this patient today. Uh, we took off 4.2 liters. The patient's still a ceph triaxone. Um, and again, um, the thing I include underneath is usually the relevant problems for patients. So this hypothetical patient has cirrhosis that's decompensated. They have COPD. They're not on home oxygen. Um, there's not any signs of an exacerbation from a COPD standpoint. And we're holding the patient's home emlodipine, right? So those are the first two parts of signing out. 
Do this for every single patient. Do it quick, but you can still do it well. The A stands for action items. When you're signing a patient out to someone else, are there any things that we need to get done in the sign out period? So I'm leaving at 7 p.m. By 7 a.m. tomorrow, are there any things that the person I'm signing out to should follow up on? So for example, here you'll see that I said, hey, there's a PMCBC for this patient. And there's also a PMBMP for this patient. So action items are things that need to get done that you are not here to do, so you need to tell someone to do that. And by actually having a slot in signing out, you're gonna make sure that this stuff does not get missed. And when you sign things out to do, try to make it as simple as possible. So what, notice here I said, follow up on the PMCBC. If the hemoglobin's less than nine, transfuse to a goal greater than, um, if the hemoglobin is less than seven, transfuse to a goal greater than seven. And if the platelets are less than 10, then transfuse to a goal above 10. Um, and follow up with the PMBMP as well, because we're diuresing the patient. Um, I want you to check the potassium. And if the potassium is less than four, please replete so that it's greater than four and I'll check up and follow up in the morning. So by having these action items in a discrete place, you can actually then uh, tell the night team exactly what to do. And usually the night team will also summarize their night events as they happen. But to notice that when you're signing out, you're actually having a spot for this in your head. It's really good to make sure you, is there anything I wanna get done for this patient? Then the S is the most important one. I get really paranoid slash annoyed when people don't do this well. Um, and I think it's really, really important that you think about doing this for every single one of your patients. I think my program does a great job because this is like literally embedded within our handoff. But the S stands for situational awareness. There's gonna be stuff that's gonna happen to your patient. The person who's taking over for you may not know the patient as well as you. And it's very important for you to kind of prep them for things that you want to do if things happen. So at our program, we call these the if-thens. If X, then Y, right? Uh, and so that's what situational awareness means and contingency planning. The biggest part of situational awareness that I like to do is I usually like to have a pertinent baseline exam. So someone who I'm signing the patient out to knows who the patient is. For example, let's say the patient has a chronic left-sided facial droop, right? It's important to sign that out because if this patient like ends up um, being called um, uh, overnight um, uh, to the resident and the resident says, whoa, this left facial droop, is that new? And they call a stroke code. Well, that's not new. It's important for them to know that the patient always has a left side of sp facial droop. So I always include a pertinent baseline exam. So you'll see here I said Spanish-speaking gentleman with no asterixis, no evidence of blood and oropharynx. Um, a patient has significant ascites that was tapped today, and he has two plus lower extremity edema, and he's alert and oriented times four, and he has no focal neurological deficits, right? Like by having a summary like that, a patient, um, the resident who's taking over from me can actually go and see the patient and see if there's any meaningful change, right? Then the next part about this is the contingency planning, the if-then section. I usually include a bunch of if-thens because sometimes it's just good to know what I would want to do if something happens. And that way, if someone overnight, usually overnight you're carrying a lot of patients. So if something crazy happens, they have all of this stuff that we can just refer them to. So I say, you know, if the patient's hypotensive, feel free to give them fluids. If the patient's hypertensive, I would start them on PO hydralazine. Um, no need to get IV hydralazine. If there's a fever, I wouldn't worry about starting antibiotics. But if they're really looking bad, then maybe start going cefepime, right? Like having these if-thens can really change the trajectory for a patient. And so that's kind of the entire I-pass mnemonic. And the last part is the synthesis of the receiver. Do they have any questions? How do they think the patient is doing? Is there anything that we didn't address that they're worried about? Um, usually I also like to make sure the code status for the patient is included as well. Or the, is the patient full code, uh, not full code, DNR, DNI, all those things. So hopefully this was helpful for you. This is kind of how I approach signing out with the I-pass tool. If it was, please drop a like, comment, share, and subscribe. It means a lot to me. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.